Hey guys, my name is Yoss. Um, some of you might know me from my Instagram account, YossCW, where I post a couple photos with my lover, Max. I don't actually call him that, I call him Babe. As you've read from the title, I'm gonna share my story about how I ran away from home. It has everything to do with my coming out story and how I dealt with it, which wasn't great. I'm gonna warn you guys that this is not like a pretty story it's still quite traumatizing for me it's was a hard pill for me to swallow when everyone found out i was gay it was kind of like an ambush but let's delve into that right now i don't even know where to begin it's such like a heavy topic you know what i'm gonna start with 2016 yes 2016 that was the year when i started going to parsons for photography that was my passion in life photography and videography it still is my passion but it's, you know, I'm getting sidetracked, but hopefully I'll be able to get into that again soon. 2016, by the way, was an amazing year for me. It was my dream come true. I've always wanted to live in New York City. I've always wanted to go to Parsons. I've always wanted to study photography, videography in this amazing school, and I was doing it. So I was over the moon, like it was like the year. And to preface everything, I'm from Indonesia. I grew up in Indonesia. I was born in Indonesia and I'm 100% Indonesian. I moved away to Canada for high school and then I went to New York City in 2016. My first year in New York City was absolutely incredible. I got to do everything that I had wanted to do going to New York. I've always told myself growing up when I was still back in Indonesia that I was going to like go to North America to have fun and be who I want to be and really just enjoy my life, enjoy that freedom, and then at some point go back to Indonesia and then live the life that my parents want me to live and follow their path. And that's always been my plan. And I have never, ever, ever planned on coming out, but everything of course changed. New York was so incredible for me. I had a lot of firsts in New York. I had my first dates. I had my first boyfriend. I went to my first gay bar. It was just an incredible experience and I would not trade it for for the world to have that experience in New York I could not have asked for like a better year and then I was wrapping up my first year and then like every summer I would go back to Indonesia because that's just what I've always done I would spend time with my family and friends back home for two three months during the whole summer uh, that summer I had tried to convince my mom to let me stay and work on a couple projects but she wouldn't let me she insisted that i go back to indonesia but i did not think anything of it because again this was like usual for me i went back pretty early on that summer i think it was may and then i remember like arriving to the airport and then seeing my family and i could tell right away that something wasn't right but i couldn't put my finger on it i would never have thought that um what was gonna happen was gonna happen so i was just kind of like being myself and whatever i was happy to be home i can't remember if it was that same day or if it was the day after that my mom told me to come in her room and she sat me down and then she said yas we know you're gay my heart instantly dropped and my reflex was to initially just deny and she didn't buy it. She told me that she has proof. Um, I'm not going to delve into that. Um, I know how she found out about everything, but I don't want to jump into that story right now. Afterwards, she told me that... After... Afterwards, she tells me that... Um, she followed it up by telling me that she had also canceled the lease to my apartment and that she had taken away my passport and all my documents. So there was no way that I could re-enter the United States even if I wanted to. I remember that very moment like it was yesterday because I went to a really, really, really dark place that first couple of weeks and I don't need to delve into what that means. I'm sure you can imagine what being in a dark place is like. My family started treating me completely differently and 
just the whole situation weighed down on my family so much that being at home every day was so uncomfortable because I knew that the life that I had thought I was going to live was going to be completely different. Like everything was going to be completely different. Everything had changed. I guess through their eyes, um, I was different. They didn't know who I was. They didn't. I grew up in front of them thinking that I had this one identity and then suddenly I'm this completely different person, but that's not true because I've always been that same person. It's just that I've been hiding this one part of me because how homophobic they are. And growing up, I hated myself for it. I hated being gay so much. And in the honest truth, I feel like this is the case with every single kid out there who grew up in a religious household. They're just gonna grow up hating themselves. So this was the time of my life when honestly, it feels like such a blur to me because when I talk about basically the entire experience of me running away, it doesn't feel like I'm talking about my story. It feels like I'm talking about someone else's story because I still can't believe it happened to me, but it did. So during that period of time where I was in deep darkness, I tried to figure out a way for me to be able to escape because now the terms has changed. My life is going to be completely different because everyone already knows that I'm gay. So why does it matter anymore? Why can't I just go out and be gay? So that was my new perspective now. My new goal was for me to be able to go back to the United States somehow and then live my life the way I wanted to live. So um, I tried to run away the first time without basically any plan because I was just in that mode where I just needed to get away somehow. I didn't bring my passport. I packed a very small backpack. I had a bit of money, so then I went to a hotel. But within literally the first hour of me being in that hotel room, my parents, my whole family, my uncle was there as well with a group of policemen to come get me. That was an awful experience, but it happened. By the way, my uncle is a priest. So basically, right after they fetched me from the hotel, they took me home. He sat me down in my room and started talking to me. And this is when I figured out how to run away properly. So basically, from that night on, I was going to try and convince my entire family, plus my uncle, that I was going to try and be straight and not be gay anymore. We had this whole plan of meeting like once a week and talk about... Um, how I'm gonna get over being gay, I guess. So it's like his version of conversion therapy. So for a couple of weeks, I was like a good boy. Like I would go to church and I would be in a good mood. Of course, things were still awfully different because I was faking it. But at the same time, I had to do what I had to do in order for me to get my password back. So after a couple of weeks, I actually succeeded in getting my passport back. So now it was just a matter of trying to fly back to the United States, which I did with the help of my friend Patricia. She is so amazing, so wonderful. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. I had already packed like a suitcase and a backpack for me to leave to her house first and then to the airport for me to fly away. Patricia arrived at my place. We were gonna have my driver drive me back to Patricia's place because I used to do that all the time when uh, I was back in Indonesia, I would just hang out at her place. So then it wouldn't be weird we somehow had to smuggle the suitcase without him being suspicious. That's when it got kind of bad because when I was carrying the suitcase down, my mom kind of saw what I was doing. But Patricia was like quick on her feet. She grabbed the luggage and then put it in the car without her noticing. And then as I got in the car, I remember kind of looking at my mom. She looked kind of teary eyed. So I had a feeling that she knew what was happening, but I had a feeling that she was kind of in shock. Um, probably because she believed that I was actually going to go through with like a conversion therapy. Anyway, that very same night, I boarded a flight to Taipei. It was an eight hour layover. And then after that, back to New York. And the first couple of months in New York was rough, but I was free. And that was all that mattered. But there were days when I would wake up really traumatized. So sometimes I would wake up in the morning and then I would actually think that I was back in my old room in Indonesia and I would wake up in cold sweats because I thought I was back being trapped again by my family and that was not fun. Um, 
but after a couple of months it kind of went away on its own so thank god i basically relied on the help from a lot of amazing strangers and a lot of amazing people a lot of amazing friends along the way um i lived with my then boyfriend for a couple of months and then we broke up thank god yeah and then the rest was history i guess at some point i met max and yeah anyway that's where i want to end the story now <sighs> i wish i had like a proper or better advice to say to someone who's going through something like that or even planning on coming out while you're living under your family's roof who's like religious or homophobic or whatever the situation is all i can say is just be strong because you're already strong for being who you are right now and then try to think of a better plan than i did because honestly i was reckless and i had to go through means that i wish i didn't have to so I really hope that yours are going to be better. The most important thing is just to kind of like plan your life ahead. Somehow if you're able to be financially independent before you do anything rash in case you're still relying on your family, don't do anything crazy yet. And just hope and pray that someday you'll get the opportunity to be able to have that freedom. All right, so thank you so much guys for listening to my story. Sorry, my camera is so shit. I just filmed this on an iPhone. I'm sure the audio is horrible. Um, I'll figure that out when we're editing. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And if you want to see more of our life, please subscribe to this channel. There are vlogs coming. I know you guys want vlogs. That's coming soon. So don't forget to subscribe and say hi once in a while because I love hearing from you guys. Bye.